As we saw in the previous video, there are different ways that we can increase or decrease the power by altering different parameters of our distributions or altering the sample size. You can see this interactively in a very useful applet, and the web link is provided in the text box down below. To use this applet, we're going to be using the same parameters that we used in the board. Well, actually, this one is going to be 112. Everything else is the same, but you see these two thermometers. One is N, or the size of your sample, and the other one is power. So let's see what happens when we tweak different parameters and see what happens to these two different parameters right here. Okay, first we can increase the sample size, and as we do that, power should also increase because standard error or the spread of each of these distributions will go down. So when I hit enter, you're going to see both of these cluster more tightly around their means, and power is going to go up because more of this alternative distribution is going to lie to the right of the cutoff, symbolized by this red dashed line. And that indeed is what happens. Power goes up to almost 0.912. I'll reset this to 16. Another way we can increase power is by merely increasing our alpha, which has the effect of moving this cutoff threshold to the left. As we do that, that is going to make more of this alternative distribution lie to the right of the cutoff, which it will increase power. Which again, we see is what happens. Lastly, and this is very intuitive, power should increase if the actual difference between the means is even greater. Okay, so if I increase it to 120, we can see power is virtually 100%. If we decrease it to 105, power goes far down. So let's take an example where power is roughly equal. So about 0.5, where we have an equal chance of randomly sampling a mean, which would allow us to either reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. If I click on this sample button right here, it's going to randomly sample a sample size of 16 and take the average of that and see where it lies in comparison to this cutoff. So I click it once, hit sample, and we fail to reject the null hypothesis because the sample mean lies to the left of the critical mean value, which is 108. Keep doing this, fail to reject null. Finally, I do reject the null hypothesis because I sample a mean that is to the right of the cutoff. So as I keep doing this on average, if I do this an infinite number of times, about 40% of the time I should reject the null hypothesis when it is in fact false. I hope this app is useful and I hope it builds your intuition about what power is and how different scanning, sorry, I do fMRI experiments, how different parameters of your experiment can affect power.